Swifters, in this video we're going to add the device location to our map. Now, while plotting the user's location is something we haven't done yet, we have gotten the user device location before. We learned how to do this when we worked on our WeatherGift app. So we'll take the code that we've already written in WeatherGift and we'll modify this for Snacktacular. Now to get the user's location, we will need to update the app's info plist privacy settings. We'll create an extension with various functions to be able to handle dealing with the user location. This includes handling the location permission request. Once we do that, we'll see that MapKit will show the user's location in the form of a pulsing blue circle. And we'll also reverse geocode to get the name and address of the user's location. Now we will also cover a new topic. We'll use the context framework to format the address from multiple components of the placemark object, and then we'll issue a challenge to format the address on a single line so that it fits inside of an MK annotation view. Let's keep mapping out the awesomeness. So here's what we want to happen. When you add a new location, we want to make sure that the user's device location shows up on the map, and if you click on this little blue pulsing ball, you should also see the name and the address of that location. Now unfortunately, we're just showing the first line of the street address. The technique we'll show for getting the address, we'll actually format the address on a multi-line string, and we'll issue a challenge for you to be able to take those multiple lines, put them on one line so they can be shown in this MK annotation view, and then we'll give the solution right after the challenge. Now what happens if you look up a new location? Well you can see we still have the blue pulsing dot indicating the user's device location. Click on it. It still shows the place name and the address. So let's see how we'll get here. Now what do we need to do if we're working with core location? Well this slide is your reference sheet. Now if you've been following along with our previous videos, you know we've already worked with core location in WeatherGift. And here are key questions that we ask when working with a new iOS feature as it relates to core location. So do we need to import frameworks? The answer is yes, but core location is automatically imported with both MapKit and Google Places. And in Spot Detail View Controller, we've already imported both of those. You don't see it, but behind the scenes, that's what's happening. So we don't need to do that again. It wouldn't harm your code if you didn't import core location, but we don't need to add that extra line since it's already included with the other frameworks. Now we also need to adopt a delegate protocol to set the location manager delegate and include some required methods. But we've already done this in WeatherGift. We've created a nice extension. It also handles the request and response to a user privacy request. So instead of writing all of this code again, we'll just use what we've already got in WeatherGift and we'll modify it for this project. Now don't copy and paste the code yet. We'll get to that in just a bit. But if you're arriving here without having completed the WeatherGift project, at that point, you'll also be able to pause the video, type the code that you'll see on screen, and if you feel like you need some more background, feel free to watch any of the videos on Location Manager that are in the WeatherGift playlist. Now we'll also need to set two user info.plist privacy setting strings that iOS uses when we ask for user permission for the device location. These are location when in use description and location always and when in use description. These have terrible names because it makes it seem like they're redundant, but they're not. You need both of these strings. Now for the way that we set up our extension, we're also going to need to create two variables. One will be a global property location manager, the other will be current location, which is going to be inside of our extension. And you also need to make sure that you set the map kit view attribute so that it shows the user location. That's that blue pulsing circle. We've already done this though. Now let's click on info plist and create those two privacy strings. Those are easy to forget. So I'm just going to stretch out my first column here so that you can see the names a little bit more clearly. Then just like we've done before, I'm going to move my cursor to the last cell in the first column. If I hold it toward the end of that cell, I'll see a little circle shows up with a plus sign in it. I'll click that plus sign. Now I could scroll to find the privacy string that I want, but I can get there faster by typing. So if I type in the word privacy with a capital P, I can see that I jump to all the different privacy strings. I'm going to select this one dash location always and when in use description. Then in this row that I just added in that first cell, I'm going to click on the plus circle again to add the second string. I'll type in privacy and I'll select this one location when in use usage description. So you want to make sure that you've selected both of those. Then for the first privacy string that I've entered, I'm going to click in the cell for the value column. And for this string, I'll type in this app will need the device location in order to determine the distance from the spot to the device and to plot the user's location on a map. Then I'll highlight this entire text, copy it with a command C, and in the cell just below this, I'll paste that same string in there too. So now we've got both of the privacy strings in there that we'll need in our info.plist. Now the rest of the code that we're going to write in this video is going to be in the spot detail view controller. And we're going to start off by grabbing the extension that we wrote in WeatherGift that deals with the location manager. So I'm going to open up my WeatherGift project. I'm going to head to location detail view controller.swift and I'm going to grab the last extension that I've got in this file. For me, it starts around line 140. It's the extension that conforms to the CL location manager delegate. 
scroll to the end, highlight the whole extension, copy it with a command C, then you can close the WeatherGift project and back in spot detail view controller.swift. Let's paste this after the last curly in this file. Now we've got to change the class name after extension. It's not location detail view controller, it's spot detail view controller. By the way, just above this extension, you see that there are these two functions inside of the Google Places extension. They both have yellow highlights next to them that indicate that these have been retired. Those two functions actually aren't necessary anymore. So one is this one that says did request autocomplete predictions. The other one is did update autocomplete predictions. Now there's always a chance you don't have this in your project because Google's updated the code when you copy this over, but if you do see these here, you can highlight both of those and delete them. We don't need them. And I'll get rid of some extra line feeds I have in here. Now if you wait a few seconds and then take a look at the extension that we just pasted in, Xcode shows us some errors on the lines that contain Location Manager. That's because we haven't defined this value Location Manager yet, so let's create it as a class property. Right underneath our region distance definition, we'll say var location manager colon cl location manager and an exclamation point because this is an implicitly unwrapped optional. Now scroll back down to the extension and those errors have gone away. Woohoo! Now before all the cool code in this extension can execute, we need to call this get location function. So let's do that at the top of view did load. We'll just say get location, open and close parens, then scroll down to our extension and just about everything else we're going to write is going to be inside of this location manager function that has did update locations as a parameter in its call. So first, let me get rid of this comment that I don't need at the top of this, and I'll put in a guard statement to check to make sure that we're going to perform everything to update the location in this if we're looking at a new location and we're not already looking at a spot. So the way we'll do that is we'll put a guard statement in here that says guard spot.name equals equals empty string else open and close curlies, then we'll return, and we do that if we have a spot name. And if we didn't do this, we'd override the spot info with the current location. Now just before we create our geocoder, I'm going to say spot.coordinate equals current location.coordinate. So now the current spot is the current location. Then all this business that I've highlighted here just before the call to update user interface, that's four lines in a comment. These are all related to things that were specific to weather gift. So I'm going to highlight these four lines and delete them. Make sure that you don't get rid of the last curly in your else statement for the if place marks not equal to nil. And then in place of the code that we just deleted, I'm going to say self.spot.name equals location name. And above that, to make sure that we update the title property whenever the user clicks on the blue user location ball, I'm going to say self.mapview.userLocation.title equals, and that'll also be location name. Now we can go ahead and build and run and try out our code so far. No errors. Let's first click plus to add a new spot. This is where iOS wants our app to get user permission to be able to access the device location. And the string that you see in here is the exact same string that you typed in in your info.p list. I'm going to select always while using the app. Then we see our pulsing blue dot right at my location. Excellent. This is the location that's set in the simulators. I've set mine to Boston College. And click on the blue dot, and we see an annotation view pops up here, and it gives us the name of this location, Boston College. Nice. Reverse geocoding is working. What happens if I look up place and add another location here? So I'll look for El Pallone Taqueria on Commonwealth Ave. That's just a short walk away from where I am on the Boston College campus. But I can see if I go back and click on my pulsing blue dot, it says Boston College there. Looking good. Now watch what happens. I'm going to click on Save to save El Pallone. Then I'm going to click back on the El Pallone cell. We show up centered on El Pallone's location. And we can see if I scroll down a little bit on the map that I've still got my pulsing blue dot. That's the user location. It's the correct location according to how I set it in my simulator. But we click on it and it says my location. Oh, what's going on here? Well, my location is what Apple puts in there by default. Well, we added a guard statement at the beginning of the function location manager did update locations. And that only let the code continue if we didn't have a name for spot. If we didn't have a name for spot, then we assumed that this is a new location and we should get the user's location. But in this situation where we've got a spot, there's a name for it already. It's El Pallone Taqueria. We're caught by the guard statement and we return. We don't continue in the function. So even if we're visiting a spot that we'd already saved, we still need to reverse geocode and find the name of the user's location. And this slide here illustrates what we need to do. Currently, when you click on the device location circle, you see the location name, but if you click the user location ball in a spot you've already saved, you'll see Apple's default My Location as the annotation view's title. Now when we fix this, we'll also make sure that the name shows up in the annotation view title and the address shows up in the subtitle. Now in the method we'll demonstrate, the whole address is there, but it's on multiple lines and the subtitle can only show one line. So for a challenge, we'll have you convert the address so that it's on just one line and it can fit into the subtitle string. 
Now in a previous lecture when we covered reverse geocoding, we learned about Apple's CL placemark object. Now this is the object that we get back when we reverse geocode based on a location's coordinates, and a placemark has lots of properties, but they were written to take into account worldwide addresses. So instead of seeing street, city, state, zip, country, you see names like subthoroughfare, thoroughfare, locality, administrative area, postal code. Now fortunately, Apple makes it easy to gather up all of these pieces that we need and present them in the right order to show an address for the part of the world that you're looking at. Now the method we're going to be using to format the address is part of Apple's context library. Now that library has all sorts of data structures and methods for dealing with contact names and addresses. So we'll import contacts and we'll make sure that our placemark has a postal address. Then we'll call the string creation method in the class CN postal address formatter. It's a class method. See how it's an upper camel case here? That means we don't have to first declare an object of this type in order to use it. And we'll use this to access string passing in our postal address. Now, if you check Apple's documentation, you'll see the postal address is a placemark attribute that's specifically formatted for use with a context framework. So that's what we're going to use in this method and saying we want to get this back in the mailing address style. That's it. Let's try it. So back at the top of Spot Detail View Controller, let's import contacts. Then let's scroll down to the location manager function with the did update locations parameter. Now, instead of stopping the function if we've already got a spot name, we still want to be able to get the name and the address of the user location. So let's highlight this guard statement and delete it, and we'll deal with a situation where we need to update just the user location and not the spot name down below. Now, we're also going to move where we set our spot coordinate. So why don't we highlight this line, spot.coordinate equals current location.coordinate, and delete that. Then we'll create two empty string variables, var name equals empty string, var address equals empty string. And those will hold the name and address we get from our place mark. Now, we'll also get rid of this line that says var location name equals empty string. And then down here at the end of the if statement where we set our location name, Let's change this so now we're updating the name variable we just created. And instead of saying parts unknown, we'll just say name unknown. Now right underneath this, we'll make sure that our placemark has a postal address attribute. So we'll say if let postal address equals placemark question mark dot postal address. Notice what code completion says about postal address. It says this variable is of type CN postal address. It's an optional, so if let's going to work here. And it says this is the postal address associated with the location formatted for use with the context framework, which is what we're just about to use. Press return to accept this, open and close curlies, then we'll just set that address variable we created, address equals, and we'll say CN postal address formatter. Again, this is a special class that we use to format a contact's postal address. This has a dot string method. We'll select this first option here that accepts a CN postal address, and it also wants a style of type CN postal address formatter style. Option click on postal address, and sure enough, this is of type CN postal address, so we can use that for the from parameter here. I'll just copy postal address and paste it after the from. Then for style, if we type a period in here, we can see the different CN postal address formatter styles. And there's only one mailing address, so we'll press return to accept this. Now we can get rid of the location name equals line down here, highlight and backspace that. And let's put an additional error check up right underneath the geocoder reverse geocode location call. So I'm just going to highlight this whole print error line, copy it with command C. Then I'm going to make a space right after the call to geocode or reverse geocode location. And I'll say if error does not equal nil, open and close curlies. That means we've got an error. I'm going to paste in my error in here. And right at the end of this string, I'm going to say string interp error exclamation point. We can force unwrap it because we know the error is not nil dot localized description. And in the error statement down here, when I just say instead of error retrieving place, I'll change that to the more accurate error retrieving place mark. Then to point out what we're doing down below, I have a comment in here. If there is no spot data, make device location the spot. And I'll say right underneath that, if self.spot.name equals equals empty string and self.spot.address equals equals empty string, open and close curlies. If that happens, it means we've got no name and no address for a spot. That must also mean for this map, we haven't selected a spot yet. So that must mean that we should go ahead and set the user location blue pulsing dot as the spot name and spot location. So in between the curlies, we'll say self.spot.name equals name, self.spot.address equals address, and self.spot.coordinate equals current location dot coordinate. Then in this line, right after the curly statement that ends the if statement, we're going to change the location name to name. Now the way that we set up the title and subtitle for our map views user location, we refer to self.mapview.userLocation. Dot, and we'll say subtitle equals address. 
Remember, in all circumstances when we get the user location, we want to set the map view, user locations, title, and subtitle. But we can also delete this line below that where we said self.spot.name equals location name. Highlight and backspace over that. And now we can build and run and check out our work. No errors. Build succeeded. Hammer time. Here's our app. Let's click on the plus to first add a spot. We zoom right into my simulator's location, which is Boston College. I'm going to click on the pulsing blue, and we see it says Boston College with a subtitle address of 2004 Beacon Street. Now, even though we're not seeing this in the subtitle line of this MK annotation view, the full address, including the state and zip, is actually in there. It's just on separate lines, but the subtitle can only show one line. I'll show you how we can verify that. So if we go back into our code, we're gonna insert a breakpoint. I'm gonna do that right at this line that says self.update user interface. In my code, this is at line 181. So I'll just click right on the line number in this gutter area here. The breakpoint shows up. You don't have to stop your code to insert a breakpoint into executing code. So we'll return to the simulator. Code is still executing. So I'm gonna click on cancel. I'll click on plus again. Our executing code hits line 181 of breakpoint triggers. So here we are paused in our code just before we call update user interface. And now down here in our debug area in the console, I'm going to type in PO for print output space and then the address variable. And when I press return, I see a line that has the full address in here. It says 2604 Beacon Street, but then it says backslash N Boston Mass 02135 backslash N United States. This is interesting. Just a side note. This is actually the address for driving instructions rather than the address for mailing. The official address is listed as Commonwealth Ave in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, with the zip code of 02467, but I digress. The thing I want you to pay attention to are these backslash ends. Now, you might remember from a previous lecture, those are the escaped characters that actually represent a line feed. So if we see that we've got two backslash ends here, this whole address line will actually print out across three lines. For your challenge, you're going to get rid of these backslash ends, but let's return to our executing code. I'm going to click on this hybrid plus play button to resume the execution of my code. Then I'm going to click on my breakpoint in 181 and drag it over to the right out of the gutter. Let it go. The breakpoint goes away. Back to my still executing project in the simulator. And again, if I click on the blue user location dot, I can see I got Boston College and the address in there. Only one line of the address is showing because of these backslash ends. Just to verify everything else is working, though, I'm going to click on Cancel. Then I'm going to click on El Palone Taqueria. Remember the problem we had before where if we had a spot, but then we clicked on the user location, it was showing my location? Well, now if we click on the blue pulsing dot, hey, it shows us Boston College and the appropriate address. Problem solved. You can also perform a little bit of user testing here to make sure if you change the location, you still have a valid location for the device location. This is all looking good. But now let's go ahead and handle the challenge where we take an address that's across multiple lines and put it on a single line. So what you're going to do is change this string variable named address that you created, find all of the line feed characters inside of that string, and replace them with something more appropriate so that the line shows up like we see here on the right. So you see we've got commas and a space where the line feeds used to be. Everything's on a single line. Now you actually learned how to do this when you covered methods on working with strings in an earlier video. So why don't you pause? Give this your best shot, and let's resume and show you a solution. So the solution's pretty easy. Hopefully you remember that there is a string method called replacing occurrences of, and I'm gonna use this method just after the address variable, and that's in this line here, and mine, it's in line 180, where we set self.mapview.userlocation.subtitle equal to address. I'm gonna say dot replacing occurrences of. Remember, code completion says this returns a new string in which all occurrences of a target string in a specified range of a string are replaced by another given string. You can forget about the specified range, but the target string is going to be inside of the double quotes backslash n, and we want to replace that. So inside with, we're going to say inside of double quotes, comma, and space. Now let's build and run, see how this looks. I'll speed this up. Here we are in our executing app. I'll click on plus to add a new spot. I see the pulsing user location circle. I'll click on that, and hey, I see everything is now showing on a single line, 2604 Beacon Street, comma, space, Boston, Massachusetts, 02135, comma, space, United States. Nice. Mission accomplished. Swifter, hope you're feeling skilled. Keep at it.